All right, folks, here's a quick video about how to thicken delicate parts in Mesh Mixer, inspired by a Maker's Muse video of a similar title, except that video is about four minutes long. Here's a 30-second version of it. First thing we want to do is use the Selection tool, select the areas of interest, in this case the feet. We're going to expand that selection by holding down Control and then scrolling upwards with our mouse wheel. We see we have sort of this jagged interface between our selection and the rest of the parts. We're going to use B to smooth out that boundary. Increase the smoothness, don't preserve the shape, uh, increase the number of iterations. These things don't actually matter, but I like to do them. Um, great, so now we have this nice selection. We're going to use D for extrude. We're going to say go normal to the direction, and you'll see that now when we make an offset, we can make them real thick, or we can make it really broken on the inside. You don't want to do that. See, that looks pretty terrible. So instead, you're going to find a little happy medium between the two, somewhere around here. Great. So that's nice and thickened. We're going to say accept. Now we're going to go about smoothing this. So we're going to double click it again. We're going to expand this lecture just a little bit. We're going to do, I think it's Shift F. Shift F, is it? Control F. Control F, great. Control F for smooth. We want to do max smoothness uh oh 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 dear we don't want to do that shape preserving i suppose let's increase the smoothness scale see that looks a lot nicer right it's very smooth we say oh, smoothing scale increase oh no, not that small great so now it's thick and then we want to make this interface a little bit nicer. So we're going to remove the face group just so we can see what's going on better. We're going to go to the our favorite brush, the Robust Smooth. We're going to put on wireframe. We're going to increase the strength of it. Yeah. So now we're disappearing the interface between the thing that we did and the original part. And that's a general thing you want to do. Be like the shadows. Be invisible. Great. Okay. And so, obviously, not actually, not obviously, I actually made this mistake. Um, something that you might want to consider doing is if you're going to 3D print this part is to do a plane cut on the bottom. Because this is not flat. It's pretty close, but it's not flat. And so when you make a plain cut, you'll find that you'll have less print failures. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go into the edit menu. There's no uh, short uh, hotkey for plain cuts, which I find rather upsetting. Oh, something about plain cuts. So you'll see there's a bunch of different options. You have, there's an S and an A, an L and a W. The L and the W refer to the frames that this uh, um, coordinate system refers to. So let me, let me go back. Okay. Plain cut. The... L is local, so that means that when I rotate this, it sort of updates to the local frame. And let's say I did W, that means it's always in the world frame. So no matter what I do to the plane, the little arrows are in the world frame. Okay, so that's the L and W. Let me undo all this. Great. Um, the S and the A, I think the S stands for, like, you know, great question. I don't know what it stands for. But it does allow you to make really nice, smooth, plain cuts. So I just want to grab a little, making sure that I'm cutting the whole bottom of these just a smidge, right? Just enough. I want to do remeshed fill, discard half. Uh oh, didn't do it. Okay, so my guess is that there's something wrong with the mesh. So we're going to use the inspector tool. And there's nothing wrong with the mesh. Great. Okay. So instead, when we get to a situation like this where it's sort of giving us some trouble, we're going to go to Edit. We're going to do Make Solid. Now, this tool usually takes a long time. Um, but in this case, it doesn't because the mesh is so small. You'll notice that it significantly reduced the resolution of our mesh. Well, don't have no fear. We can switch it to Accurate. We can keep the solid accuracy up, and we can keep the mesh density up, and then we can update. Now, it's going to take a little bit to think. My computer's quite fast, so fortunately, not too long. And then you'll see that, oh, it doesn't show you anything. Well, 
don't worry, if you just click, it'll pop up. So you see, ah, uh, we've maintained a lot of the original accuracy. For me, this is good enough, um, but you can keep playing with this until it keeps going higher and higher and higher. There's another thing you can do, which is sort of neat, you can turn it to blocky. This is a super fun. Um, it's, I don't know why anyone would want this, <laughs> but you can just turn it into a bunch of blocks, which is sort of cool. Uh, and then if you decrease the solid accuracy like a lot and the mesh density, it doesn't actually even make sense here. It's just solid accuracy. But yeah, you can make them into like various sized blocks. So let's go like really low solid accuracy update. Yeah, see? Now I've taken the thing and I've just turned it into a couple of blocks, which is hilarious. Who built this? I don't know, but I'm really happy they did. It makes me extraordinarily happy. Anyway, sorry, a bit of a divergence there. Uh, 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 digression, not a divergence. What am I thinking? Okay, so solid accuracy way higher, actually. Let's bring it all the way up. Pro tip, if it's not high enough here, you can actually just type in the number that's higher. So let's do like 520, just as, as, as a, um, a demonstration that you can do that. In general, you'll probably be fine with just 512. Um, but in case it isn't, then there you go. So you do a little clicker rooney You say, okay, that's good enough for the girls I run with. You say, accept. And now you'll notice that when we do the plane cut, and we kind of come down here, that it doesn't fight us anymore, right? Because there's... So because we sort of did this expansion of the mesh by means of ex the extrusion, there's some intersecting meshes, and the mesh mixer doesn't really like that. And so by making it solid, we can sort of guarantee that the inside of it is all hunky-dory.